Good morning. Today, Kushbu and I are going to do our second to the last reading in the Bhagavad Gita for this run through. Uh, we are uh, reading from Discourse 18, which is the last discourse in the Bhagavad Gita, and we are going to read uh, Slokes 26 to 50. Uh, that's verses 26 to 50. And I am reading from uh, the Bhagavad Gita, translated by Laurie Patton, which is in the Penguin Classic Edition. I'm reading from the Light Illuminations Bhagavad Gita, uh, translated by Sri Purohit Swami, annotated by Kendra Cross and Barrows. And I am reading from uh, the Bhagavad Gita, translated by uh, R.K. Sharma with Carol Pitts and Les Morgan. We will begin, slope 26. 26, 27, and 28, I'll read together. Mukta sado danaha vardi drutyu tesaha saman nivitaha siddhya siddhyo nirvikara karta satvika uchayate ragi karma phala prepsu lup dodho hinsatma koda suchi harsha shokanti taha karma raja saha pari kirti taha ayuktakaha prakrutaha satvam bandho shado neshta kut ne Neshkruti koda lasaha Vishadi dirgha sutri cha karta tamasa uchayate Slok 26, 27, 28 The patent reads, The actor who is free from clinging and talk of self, who is accompanied by effort and courage, unchanged by fulfillment or lack of fulfillment, is said to be sattvic. Passionate act, the passionate actor, longing to acquire the fruit of action, impure, greedy, whose nature is violent and filled with pain and pleasure, is said to be rajasic. The actor who is stubborn and vulgar, not joined to yoga, lazy, false, and wicked, despondent and procrastinating, is said to be tamasic. The prose reads, But when a man has no sentiment and no personal vanity, when he possesses courage and confidence, cares not whether he succeeds or fails, then this, his action arises from purity. In him who is impulsive, greedy, looking for reward, violent, impure, torn between joy and sorrow, it may be assumed that in him passion is predominant. While he whose purpose is infirm, who is low-minded, stubborn, dishonest, malicious, indolent, despondent, procrastinating, he may be assumed to be in darkness. And the Sharma reads, that agent who is free from attachment and ego, who is endowed with fortitude and enthusiasm, uninfected, unaffected, unaffected by success or failure, is said to be dominated by sattva. That agent who is strongly partial, desirous of obtaining the results of action, greedy, violent, impure, and swayed by feelings of delight and despair is considered to be dominated by rajas. That agent who is undisciplined, vulgar, stubborn, deceitful, wicked, indolent, pessimistic, and procrastinating is said to be dominated by Thomas. Slope 29. 29 to 32, okay? Okay. Uh, Buddhi Brada Drutekshwa Gunata Stri Vindahak Shunu Prochya Mana Masse Mashe Shena Prutha Tavena 
धनंजय प्रवृत्ति च निवृत्ति च कार्य कार्ये भयाभये बंध मोक्षम बंधम मोक्षम च या वेति बुद्धि ही सा पार्थ सात्विकी यया धर्मम धर्म च कार्य चाकार्य मेवच अय थावत प्रजानाति बुद्धि ही सा पार्थ राजशी अधर्म धर्म मिति या मन मन्यते तम शावृत्ता सर्वा सर्वार्था निर्व परिश्रा परितांश्रव बुद्धिशी सा पार्थ तामसी स्लोक ट्वेंटी नाइन टू थर्टी टू पैटन रीड्स अर्जुन विनर ऑफ वेल्थ नाउ हियर द थ्री काइंड्स ऑफ इनसाइट एंड करेज अकॉर्डिंग टू द गुनस set forth completely one by one son of prita that insight which distinguishes exertion from inertia that to be done from that not to be done that to be feared from that not to be feared is sattvic and son of prita the insight which does not distinguish correctly between dharma and its absence between that to be done and that not to be done is rajasic son of prita the insight wrapped in darkness which thinks that all things are backwards and that the dharma is in, is its absence is tomasic that is the pattern the sharma reads reason and conviction are threefold according to the quality which is dominant i will explain them fully and severally o arjuna that intellect which understands the creation and dissolution of life that at what action should be done and what not which discriminates between fear and fearlessness bondage and deliverance that is pure the intellect that does not understand what is right and what is wrong what should be done and what not is under the, under this ray of passion and that which sh- sh- shrouded in ignorance thinks wrong right and sees everything perversely o arjuna that intellect is ruled by darkness and the sharma reads a winner of wealth listen to the variation of intellect and also of steadiness according to the threefold gunas described fully one by one o son of prita that other all which understands o son of prita that intellect which understands the difference between activity and inactivity what ought to be done and what ought not to be done fear and fearlessness and bondage and liberation is dominated by sattva o son of prita that intellect which wrongly discriminates between what is righteous and what is unrighteous and also between what ought to be done and what ought not to be done is dominated by rajas o son of prita that intellect which enveloped by darkness considers the unrighteous as righteous and all things as contrary to what they are is dominated by tamas slok 33 33 34 35 dhrutya yaya dharayate मनः प्राणेन्द्री प्रारेन्द्री य क्रिया योगे योगे न व्यभिचारिण्य धृति ही सा पार्थ पार्थ सात्विक की यया तु धर्म काम अर्थान्धृत्या धारयते दर्जुन प्रस प्रसदेन फला फला कांदी ही धृती ही सा पार्थ राजसी यया स्वपन्न भय भयम शोकम 
विषादम मद मेव च न विमुंजृति धर्मेधा ध्रुति ही सा पार्थ तामसी श्लोक थर्टी थ्री थर्टी फोर थर्टी फाइव The pattern reads, "Son of Prita, by yoga which does not stray, the teddy, the steadiness with which." I'll start that again. Son of Prita, by yoga which does not stray, the steadiness with which one maintains the actions of the senses, the vital breath and the mind, that steadiness is sattvic. But Arjuna, son of Prita. The steadiness with which one maintains wealth, desire, and dharma, longing for the fruit with clinging, that steady that steadiness is rajasic. That steadiness is rajasic, son of Prita. The steadiness with which a dull-witted one holds on to pride and despondence, or pain, fear, and sleep, that steadiness is tamasic. Prose reads, the conviction and steady concentration by which the mind, the vitality, and the senses are controlled, O oh, Arjuna, they are the product of purity. Uh, let's mute you when I'm reading. I'm sorry. Um, all right. So from Slok thirty four, the conviction which always holds fast to rituals, to self interest and wealth, for the sake of what they may bring forth. That comes from passion, and that which clings perversely to false idealism, fear, grief, despair, and vanity, it is the product of ignorance. And the Sharma reads, that steadiness with which one sustains the functions of the mind, the life force, and the senses with unwavering yogic discipline, that steadiness is dominated by sattva, O son of Prita. On the other hand, O Arjuna, steadiness which holds to duty, pleasure, and material prosperity, with attachment and desire for results, that steadiness is dominated by rajas, O son of Prita. The steadiness by which an unwise person does not get rid of sleep, fear, grief, depression, and arrogance. O son of Prita, that steadiness is dominated by tamas. Slope thirty-six. Till thirty-nine, I'll read. Okay. Sukham tivadani nihi trividham dhrumo kshrunu me Bharat kshab abhyasad mate. यत्र दुखा नंतम च निगंचति यत्य दगे विषमिव परिणा मेद मृतो पमम तत्सु खम सात्विकम प्रोत्य मात बुद्धि प्रसाद प्रसाद जनम विषय मृतोपम पिणा विषमिव तत्सुखम रजंश समृत यदगे चानुबंधे च सुख मोहन मात्मनम निंद्रा लक्ष्य प्रमादोन्तथ तथा मसमृहा रतम श्लोक 36 टू 39 पैटर्न रीड्स बट नाउ हियर फ्रॉम मी बोल ऑफ बराथस the three grades of joy which one can experience through practice and arrive at an end of sorrow that joy which is like poison in the beginning and is like nectar when transformed born from clarity in the insight of the self is said to be sattvic 
that joy which is like nectar in the beginning and poison when transformed through contact between the senses and their objects is known as rajasic. And that joy which in its beginning and in its end deludes the self and arises from confusion, craziness, and I'm sorry, I'll read that again. This is verse 39. And that joy in its beginning and in its end deludes the self and arises from confusion, laziness, and sleep is said to be tamasic. And the prose reads, Hear further the three kinds of pleasure, that which increases day after day and delivers one from misery, which at first seems like poison, but afterward acts like nectar. That pleasure is pure, for it is born of wisdom. That which at first is like nectar, because the senses revel in their objects, but in the end acts like poison, that pleasure arises from passion while the pleasure which from first to last merely drugs the senses, which springs from indolence, lethargy, and folly, that pleasure flows from ignorance. And there's a comment here by Eknath Isvaran. The English word renounce strikes a cold note, but the Sanskrit word tyaga implies a positive, joyful act in which we find fulfillment in the words of Jesus. We have to lose ourselves to find ourselves. The Sharma reads, Moreover, O bull among the Bharatas, now hear from me the three kinds of happiness, whereby, with habitual practice, one rejoices and attains the end of sorrow. That which initially is like poison, but ultimately is like ambrosia, that happiness arising out of the clarity of one's intellect is declared to be dominated by sattva. That happiness arising through contact of the sense organs with material objects, which initially is like ambrosia, but ultimately is like poison, is considered to be dominated by rajas. That self-deluding happiness, which seems pleasant both initially and afterward, which arises out of sleep, indolence, and negligence, is said to be dominated by Thomas. Slope 40. Till 44, I'll read. Okay. Um, na tadasti pruthivya va divi deveshu va punaha. Sattva prakruti chemu kantam yadebhi syati bhirguni he brahmana kshatriya visham shundrana cha param tata tapa karmani pravi bhaktani svabha Prabha Vegune He Kshamu Damastapaha Saucha Gyaninta Raja Vameva Cha Gyana Vigyana Mastita Kalyaha Brahmana Karma Brahma Karma Swabhava Jama Shorya Tejo Druti Dakshani Yadre Chapya La cha, Chapya Pala Yanam Dana Bhishvara Bhavakshraha Kshantaha Gyatram Gyatram Karma Swava Swabhava Jam Swabhava Jam Krushi Goraksha Kshaya Vaninjyam Veshya Karma Svabhavajam Paricharyatmakam Karma Shudra Syapi Svabhavajam 
Slok 40 to 44. The pattern reads, there is no being on earth or in heaven or among the gods, no being who is free from these three gunas, born of nature, scorcher of the enemy, the actions of Brahman priests, Kshatriya warriors and Vaishya merchants are portioned out by the gunas, sources of each innate nature. Brahman action is born from the nature within, calmness, restraint, heated discipline, purity, patience, honesty, wisdom, discernment, and a sense of pleasure. Warrior action is born from the nature within, might inner light, courage, and skill, and not fleeing in battle, generosity, and a lordly temperament. Vaisha merchant action is born from the nature within. within. Vaisha merchant actions are born from the nature within. Trade, cow herding, and plowing, and the action of service is born from the nature within the shudras, those who serve. The prose reads, and there's a long footnote here, there is nothing anywhere on earth or in the higher worlds which is free from the three qualities, for they are born of nature. O Arjuna, the duties of the spiritual teachers, the soldiers, the traders, and the servants have all been fixed according to the dominant quality in their nature. Serenity, self-restraint, austerity, purity, forgiveness, as well as uprightness, knowledge, wisdom and faith in God, these constitute the duties of a spiritual teacher. Valor, glory, firmness, skill, generosity, steadiness in battle and ability to rule, these constitute the duty of a soldier. They flow from his own nature. Agriculture, protection of the cow and trade are the duty of a trader, again in accordance with his nature. The duty of a servant is to serve, and that to that too, the duty of a servant is to serve, and that too agrees with his nature. And there's a footnote, and this is a footnote to verse uh, 41, so I'll read that again. O oh, Arjuna, the duties of the spiritual teachers, the soldiers, the traders, and the servants have all been fixed according to the dominant quality in their nature. The footnote is, this verse concerns the four social divisions, Varnas, of ancient India, Brahmins, priests and educators, Kshatriyas, warriors and rulers, Vaishyas, producers and merchants, and Shudras, servants and laborers. The word Varna is usually translated caste but should be distinguished from the degraded concept of caste, jati, in contemporary Indian society. Varna literally means color, which some commentators interpret in an esoteric manner as referring not to skin color, but to the aura, a subtle energy field around a person, perceptible to some as colored light, which reflects the nature of his or her mental impressions. The four varnas were thus originally based on innate qualities and outward actions of people. According to Yogananda, the shudra is identified with body consciousness and senses. The Vaishra cultivates wisdom. The kshatriya practices self-control to protect his or her mental kingdom from the invasion by ego forces and the Brahman possesses knowledge of spirit. In order to be a Brahman, we do not need to wear a sacred thread or to undergo purification ceremonies. Whoever tries to know Brahman, the supreme reality embedded within him, is a Brahman, according to Ishvaran. The Buddha expresses a similar view in Dhammapada, the Brahman. Sri Aurobindo says that each of us has all four castes in our spiritual nature, a soul of knowledge, a soul of strength and of power, a soul of mutuality, 
and interchange, a soul of works and service. Usually one of these predominates in an individual and colors his or her expression of the other three. <clears throat> in life, we follow our predominant nature, not crudely and rigidly as in the caste system, but subtly and flexibly. By developing our own essential nature and being true to ourselves, we develop the other three powers as well. Thus, says Sri Aurobindo, if we follow a nat natural impulse to service, the servant within us, rightly done, that is, if we help others without self-interest or attachment to results, we will, we will simultaneously develop our knowledge, the spiritual teacher, increase our power, the soldier, and cultivate the art of relationship, the trader. The quality of a person can neither be the quality of a person can be neither determined nor circumscribed nor start that again. The quality of a person can be neither determined nor circumscribed by any man made birth caste classification, according to Yogananda. That sounds a lot like wholeness in Jungian psychology, just for the record. That's, that's my view. The Sharma reads, there is no entity on the earth or in heaven or among the gods as well, which can be free of these three gunas arising from nature. The duties of the Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and also of the Sudras are divided according to the attributes according to the attributes arising from their own inherent nature, O destroyer of the enemy. And there's a footnote. The Gita does not support a rigid social order. Each individual is born with a unique combination of tendencies and predispositions. We need to recognize our particular gifts and with an attitude of non-attachment and service to the Supreme, develop them for work in the community and society. For a note on the social classes, see verse 1, 7. Verse 42. Tranquility, self-control, austerity, purity, forgiveness, straightforwardness, and also knowledge, spiritual awareness, and faith in the existence of God are the duties of the Brahmanas arising from their own inherent nature. Valor, brilliance, fortitude, competence, and also not retreating from battle, generosity and leadership are the duties of the Kshatriyas arising from their own inherent nature. Agriculture, ranch, ranching, agriculture, ranching, and business are the duties of the Vaishyas arising from their own inherent nature. Also rendering service is the duty of the sutras arising from their own inherent nature. Slope 45. 45 to 48. Sve sve karmana karmanya bhirata bhirataha sansim bhim labhate nara sva karma nirataha sindhi yatha vindati tachyash chunu yata pravrutti bhrutana yena sarvaminda tatama sva karmana tama bhyacharya sindhi vindita manava, manavam kshreya Shreyana Svadharmo Vigunaha Paradharma Tasva Nushti Tata Svabhavani Niyatam Karma Kunana Prati Kili Kili Bayasham Sahajam Karma Ken Kenteya sado kshamapi na 
त्यजेत सर्वारंभा ही दोष दोषेण धुमे न ग्रीरी खा वृत्ता श्लोक फोर्टी फोर टू फोर्टी एट Content in one's own act. Con- I'm going to start that again. Sorry. Content in one's own action, one gains complete fulfillment. Here, then, how one who is content in his own action finds fulfillment, honoring by one's own action the one from whom all beings come forth, the one by whom all the world is pervaded. A human being finds fulfillment. One's own dharma, however badly done, is a higher good than another's dharma, however well done. If one performs action as set down by one's own nature, one does not create fault. Son of Kunti, one should not let go of one's natural action, even if it is flawed. All beginnings are surrounded by error. As fire is surrounded by smoke. The prose reads Perfection is attained when each attends diligently to his duty. Listen, and I will tell you how it is attained by him who always minds his own duty. Man reaches perfection by dedicating his action to God. Who is the source of all being and fills everything? It is better to do one's own duty, however defective it may be, than to follow the duty of another, however well, may, however well one may perform it. He who does his duty is his own nature. He who does his duty as his own nature reveals never sins. The duty, that, the duty that of itself falls to one's lot should not be abandoned. Let's start that again. The duty that it, of itself falls to one's lot. Nah. Start. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the duty that of itself falls to one's lot should not be abandoned, though it may have its defects. All acts are marred by defects, as fire is obscured by smoke. And the Sharma reads, Contented with one's own duty, a person obtains complete fulfillment. Here, now, how one finds that fulfillment, contented with one's own duty. That from which beings are manifested, that by which all this is pervaded, worshipping, that with one's own duty, a person finds fulfillment. Better is one's own duty, even if lacking in merit, than another's duty performed well. One performing the duty enjoined by one's own inherent nature does not incur sin. O son of Kunti, one must not abandon one's naturally determined duty even if imperfect, for all undertakings are covered with imperfection, as fire is covered by smoke. Slok 49. 49 and 50. Okay. Asakta vridhi sarvatra jitatma viga tashpruha pruha. Neshkarma Neshka Mya Sindhi Parama Sanya Sena Dhiga Chatti Sindhi Prapyo Yatha Brahma Tatha Prapoti Nibodhame Sama Seneva Konteya Nishta Gyanasya Yapara 49 and 50. The patent reads With insight that clings to nothing, with longing passed away, 
oneself subdued through renunciation, one goes to the highest fulfillment in the state beyond action. Son of Kunti, learn from me briefly. The one who has found fulfillment also gains Brahman, the highest state of wisdom. The prose reads, he whose mind is entirely detached, who has conquered himself, whose desires have vanished, by his renunciation reaches that stage of perfect freedom where action completes itself and leaves no seed. I will now state briefly how he who has reached perfection finds the eternal spirit, the state of supreme wisdom. And the Sharma reads, one with an unattached understanding everywhere who is self-controlled, free from longing, attains by virtue of renunciation, the highest success in non-action. O son of Kunti, understand in brief from me how after having attained success, one thus attains Brahman, which is the supreme state of wisdom. Okay, so that's the end of today's reading. Um, we'll have to read uh, verse 50 again at the beginning of the last reading to set the context for the last reading. Thank you, Kushbu. It's been great. And the sound quality on uh, your end is much, much better than it was before. So uh, your new cell phone seems to be doing well for us. So anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am on to the advanced reading group now. So peace. Peace. Take peace. Care.